Hi, welcome back to Programming in Python. This video is going to cover expressions and operators. First, we're going to cover, we're going to talk about a little bit about variables, just to remind you. Uh, we, you've probably seen variables in math class before, right, where x equals 3 plus 5, which really means x equals 8, and you've seen these kind of variables. Well, variables in programming are similar, but we can have different types. So, not just numbers, right, but we can have things like strings. Um, so, we use variables, right, to allow us to store information. And variables is one of those core fundamental concepts in programming. Um, each variable allows us to access memory in a computer where this, this data is put. We get to label that variable. So I put this image of jars because notice that there's labels on them. You know, there's stuff inside the jars as well as these labels. And that's like a variable. The information that we access can change. That's why we call it a variable, because we can change that value. We can, if you think of it like a jar, we can dump out the jar and put, you know, different stuff in there. So that's what uh, a variable is. Now, syntax wise, the dark yellow shows pseudocode which is not real code, but similar to, to what we're getting at. And then the lighter yellow has Python code. So pseudocode says we give it a variable name and then we give it a value. And so an example would be like age. We have a, a variable name age and we give it the value 15. We can also use expressions. So a variable equals some expression like you've done like, like the previous examples from math, would be something like product equals seven times four. The equal sign means assignment. So this equals will always mean assignment. We are taking a value and putting it, assigning it to a variable. So we're taking, for example, that number 15 and storing it in a variable named age. And then the variable has to be on the left side of the equal, of that assignment. Because what the computer does is, is evaluates everything to the right of the equals, figures out what, you know, if there's any math expressions or other stuff that is going to happen, and then it takes that value and then assigns it to the variable. So the primitive, we have some primitive types. We also have some non-primitive types, and we'll do those in the future. But today, we're going to talk about the primitive data types in Python. And the first one is a string or str, S-T-R. Also, we'll just write the word string as well. And that's a string of characters. So any kind of characters like that you would see on your keyboard. For example, we could create a variable named M, you know, message. I just shortened it with MSG equals and then double quotes for hello world, exclamation mark. So the variable name is message and the value is hello world. Uh, another type is int which is an integer, or you may remember from, from math, a whole number. And that whole number can be positive or negative. So some examples might be num equals 42, zero, so I created a variable called zero equals the value zero, and negative equals minus one. So I created a variable called negative, and I assigned it a value of negative one. Not only do we have whole numbers, we have floating point numbers. And we use that data type as a float. Um, you may also think of it as a decimal point number. So things like, you know, pi equals 3.1415 or neg equals negative 12.5, right? They can be positive and negative as well. Um, and, you know, and you can, it can be quite long as well. Now, the last type is a bool or we'll say Boolean. Um, and that has a value of true or false. And in Python, it's, the word true with a capital T is a reserved word. And, the reser and false with a capital F is a reserved word. So these two, true and false, these are reserved words in Python. And so we can take a variable and assign it that value as well. In other programming languages, we, there is this concept of Boolean and true and false. Though in some languages, the T might be a lowercase t and the F might be a lowercase f. So just know that, but it does mean that those are reserved words for that programming language. Okay, so let's do an example of using a variable. Let's write a program that solves the equation x equals three times four plus seven. 
right? And so here's two examples. One, we just created a variable with the name X, which, okay, that's fine, but sometimes that doesn't always, you know, really short variable names aren't great sometimes. So um, I changed it to like result. So result equals three times four plus seven. And then we're using the print function to print it. And when we take that variable and put it into print, it actually prints the value of that variable. So the value of that variable gets printed. So for example, in this case, the, what is printed is, seven, is 19. So three times four, right, is 12, plus seven is 19. Now we're gonna get into our operators. So as we saw, we can have two types of variables for numbers, ints and floats, and they're positive and negative values. And we can do mathematical operations with each of them. And the ones that you've seen like similar to a calculator would be, you know, plus, minus, you know, multiplication, division, or addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So in the dark yellow, that's what you might see on a calculator or from math class. And in the light yellow, this is what you actually are going to use on your keyboard. You're going to use a plus, which you, you know, probably used to using that before up in the very right top right hand corner, a minus right next to it, a star or, or an asterisk, as we call it, a star or an asterisk, that's the shift H, so that's what that is, and then which might have actually six points instead of five points, but that's what's on your keyboard, and then that slash, we may call it a slash or a forward slash, right, and that means division. So that's what we're gonna use. Uh, we also have some other operators as well. We have modulo, which is this percent, so that's a shift five on your keyboard. We have exponent, and that's, we get to use two asterisks next to each other. They have to be next to each other. No spaces in between there. Okay. So um, let's first talk about the, the addition, subtraction. You understand what that does. For division, there is in Python two types of division. We have true division and integer division. So true division is what you think of as division. It will always give us a float. It, no matter if we give it ints, it will always give us a float, okay? So that's it's really what you think about when you think about division, right? If we say four divided by three, we know it's 1.333333. Or 10 divided by two is five, but it gives us a float. So really it gives us 5.0. And 10 divided by 2.5 will give us 4.0. And 99 divided by 100 gives us 0 0.99. So we will get these points and when this point zero and when we go to print it we will see that as well so we know that it's a floating point or float now for integer division we're going to use two slash forward slashes right next to each other no spaces in between there two right next to each other and what it does is it results in an integer it only gives us an integer okay and so you can think of it as it gives us the integer and then it gets rid of all that floating point. It just truncates it. It removes the decimal um, part. So, you know, four divided by, you know, slash slash, you know, when we talk about integer division, for integer division, or four divided by three using integer division is one, not 1.333. Um, and then we get 10.0. Now, notice that 10 integer division by 2.5, because we've given it a float, it's gonna give us a float back, but it will only give us a whole number. And then, now the tricky one is the last one, 99 divided by integer division 100. Well, if you think about it, how many times does 100 go into 99? Zero times. And so that value is zero. It's not 0 0.99, it's zero. Notice, no rounding. When we talk about integer division, we get the integer part. It's like when you, when the, the long hand of division where you would write it and you know, put it up at the top, there's no rounding. That, ju that just information gets lost. It's just the whole number part. Okay. So now let's talk about modulo. If you haven't seen it before, also called modulus. It's also, we'll just call it mod. So the, the modulo or mod operator gives us the remainder from division. So if you use, in, you know, it's like what remains from integer division. 
So, you know, um, we'll say how many times, like four mod three, how many times does three go into four? It goes into one time, but what remains? One, right? Um, so how many times does two go into 10? Five times, but what's the remainder? Zero. 10 mod 2.5, again, we put, gave it a float, so it gives us back a float, but it's still 0, 0.0. And then you look at something like 99 mod 100, how many times does 100 go into 99? Zero times, right? Because that's what we got from integer division, but the remainder is 99. So that gives us the remainder. And then the last one is just another example, nine mod two. How many times does two go into nine? Well, hopefully you're thinking two goes into nine. Four times, right? Four times two is eight. What's the remainder? One. So that's modulo. And this is really helpful to use. You're like, why would we ever use this? Um, it's really nice to use it to determine if an integer is odd or even because you mod it by two and you're either gonna get a zero or a one. If you go to zero back, you know that it's an even number. If you get a one back, you know it's an odd number. And then we can also use it for like if one integer is, is evenly divisible by another integer. And there's other cases that we'll use it as well, like, oh, you wanna put something kind of in a range. We can mod, we can mod it and get, get something in that range. So here's just some examples of math with integers. So you could see a whole, just a whole example of using addition, subtraction. You'll notice like if both of them are integers, right? It generally gives us an integer except for true division, right? True division will always give us a float. Um, integer division, of course, will just give us an integer. Modulus will give us, or modulo, it will give us a one and then we have the exponent. So it's, you know, seven to the power of three. That's what that ex exponent is. So that's an example using integers. Here's the same examples using floats. Just so you can see that in this case, we're always gonna get floats back, okay? So even if it's an even number, we're still gonna have that point zero at the end. We're gonna get a float. Okay, so Here's a question for you. Will the two equations give us the same result? X equals three times four plus seven, and Y equals seven plus three times four. So will they give us the same results? You look at it, maybe, maybe, maybe. Hopefully you're thinking back to what you learned in like algebra long ago. Yes, it will give us the same, but why? Why? Hopefully you're thinking of PEMDAS or GEMDAS, depending on where you grew up, but the order of operations. So we are gonna use the order of operations. We, we throw in an extra, right? Well, we have the first one's PEMDAS, of the P is parentheses, right? So parentheses always determine first. Then we have exponents. And then in one step, we have multiplication, division, and modulo. So just think all of those are, you know, that will be evaluated, you know, from your equation from, from left to right, whatever comes first. And then we have addition and subtraction is last. So order of operations, just like in math, that the computer behaves the same way. Uh, we can prioritize with those parentheses because that will of course be the first step. Okay, so that is what, uh, what, what gets used. Without parentheses, the expression are evaluated according to the order of operations. So that's a summary of using a little bit about variables, using expressions, all these um, arithmet arith arithmetic operators. And hopefully you um, understand this and uh, play around with it uh, using, uh, using Python. <laughs>